morning. I'm Leanne Rod with the Women's Networking Group. And uh, welcome to our very dedicated crowd this morning. We're here to learn about iPhone video production with Jonathan. Um, Jonathan is the production manager at ACMI TV. If you've looked at the Arlington Public Access channels, you may have seen some of his work. Um, he has a passion for media production as ACMI's production manager. He empowers individuals and organizations with the skills to create effective videos and marketing materials. He develops personalized filmmaking workshops and has spoken at conferences across the country. As a freelance media producer, he engages the Harvard Kennedy School, the Mass Literacy Foundation, the Boston Herald, and others to create effective branded content. Jonathan has previously been a member of IATSE Local 161 as a script supervisor based out of New York, working with some well-known clients including Hasbro, HGTV, MTV, PBS, Showtime, the Boston Red Sox, the New England Revolution, and others. In his free time, Jonathan enjoys constructing, taking classes, creating 3D paper dioramas, and traveling the world. And playing the piano at town hall. That's and playing the piano at town hall. So, <laughs> welcome, Jonathan. He really is very good. Thank you. Oh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for morning. coming. Um, so today we're going to be talking about creating videos with your smartphone. Um, it can be a little bit of lecture and also activities. So look around you, think about who could be your partner to do videos. So we'll be teaming up in just a little bit. Um, like they mentioned, I work with a lot of different clients creating branded content. So I have a lot of knowledge on sort of what creates effective marketing campaigns, um, why organizations want to create videos, and kind of take those tips from those large companies and bring some of those to you that you can use in your own businesses. I work at Arlington Community Media as the um, production manager, and what we do at ACMI is help people create TV shows, um, short films, uh, interviews, also we cover sports and news. So after today, if you feel like you want to create something bigger, you want to create like an interview show with people to set yourself up as an expert in your field, or create a how-to video so people can learn your process and maybe sort of see you as somebody who has a lot of knowledge, we can help you with that. Let's talk about why you might want to shoot video. Okay, so what is the, who can tell us what the largest search engine on the internet is? Google. 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 And does anyone know what the second largest is? YouTube. YouTube. YouTube is the second largest search engine online. And that's really one of the biggest reasons why you want to be creating video, because you want to be showing up where people are looking for content, looking to connect with those videos. And if you are creating videos and you have them on your website, you'll show up higher in Google search. And in fact, you are 50% more likely to show up as number one search in Google if you have videos on your website, as opposed to having no videos and just text. Uh, you can see understanding of your, your product, your service. If you have videos, people can see what you do. They're not just reading a wall of text trying to interpret what it is that you do, what your process is, how great would it be if you could show them what it is what you do, what makes what you're doing special and different from anybody else. Um, you can also offer consumers the medium that they want. Viewers are watching an hour and 55 minutes per day uh, of video on social media websites. That's really where a lot of the concentration is rather than reading text. And people build an affiliation with your brand, they keep coming back to you if you create consistent media and you're showing up more in social media feeds. Especially today, with everything that's been going on on social media, businesses are ranked lower and lower, and business posts and business feeds aren't showing up organically in uh, news feeds. But if you have video, um, you'd be more likely to show up in users' news feeds, and also people are gonna share those videos on their own personal site. And most importantly, you can tell a stronger story. You could, uh, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Imagine a picture every 30 seconds. <laughs> like 30 pictures a second uh, with video, so you can tell a really strong story and get, uh, get some connection there. We're gonna start off with a baseline for each of you. So you can, you'll be able to evaluate from what you know now to the end of the workshop, and you'll, learn, you'll see all those skills that you'll have, and most importantly, um, by the end of the day, you'll be creating really high quality videos, and I want you to create something now with what you already know so when you're teaching it to other people in your organization or you're trying to connect with someone else to help you, you can show them, this is what I started off with and this is what, this is what we're gonna make. So what I want you to do is take your phones, 
partner up with somebody, one person can film, one person can shoot. Or if you want to do it by yourself, you can also do it yourself. And I'm going to take just five minutes, introduce yourself, and say what you're doing here uh, today in the workshop. So just going to be messy. I'm not giving you any instructions. Just open up, you know, find, find the video app in your phone, shoot a video, <laughs> saying what you're doing here today. <laughs> And uh, we're going to take five minutes, so and at the end of five minutes, I'm going to call you back, and we're going to talk about your videos. All right. So two quick questions. Um, what were some challenges that someone came across? Did anyone have any challenges making this first video? As a photographer, I'm going to talk about lighting. Lighting is really bad coming from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's, that, is a, that is a good one. We'll touch on it. Um, anybody else? To making it stable. Yeah, like it, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard to it's hard to not make have that Blair Witch feel to it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you an example that I shot uh, that we had someone shoot earlier that kind of can show a lot of different problems and uh, so see if you identify with any any of these. All right, tell me the mic's bigger. Okay. Yeah, go. I'm Emily Baker. I'm an intern here at Arlington Community Media, and I'm really just excited to see what we're going to learn at this iPhone video production class. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a couple of problems. Uh, <laughs> mentioned the lighting, <laughs> having it shaky. Um, <laughs> So those are some of the common issues we run into. And one common issue that people um, run into is that they shoot the video, that they're shooting the video vertically. You want to shoot a video horizontally because it works on television. And I'm going to show you a little reason why. It's a short video, and this will help you remember uh, for next time. Mm -hmm. This video didn't have to look this way. It could have been prevented. Say no to vertical video. <laughs> Hold your camera the wrong way. Your video will end up looking like crap. <laughs> there are more and more people addicted to making vertical videos every day. It's not crack or nothing, but it's still really bad. There are two different kinds of people who are afflicted with BVS. <laughs> the videos they shoot like pictures. They don't mean any harm. They just don't understand that while you can turn a picture, you can't really turn a video. <laughs> Another group is people who don't give a <laughs> Vertical video syndrome is dangerous. Motion pictures have always been horizontal. Televisions are horizontal. Computer screens are horizontal. People's eyes are horizontal. <laughs> 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 to watch vertical videos. I'm gonna watch that. But hopefully that will help you remember when you're shooting, you want to shoot a horizontal video. So we went ahead and uh, filmed the correct version version of that uh, last piece, and you can take a look at some of the different the difference between them. Hi, I'm Emily Baker. I'm an intern here at Arlington Community Media and I'm excited to take this class on iPhone video production. A lot better that second yeah, time. Yeah. Um, one thing, it's horizontal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, the lighting you can see clearly on, on the person's face and the camera is relatively steady and the audio is nice and clear. Let's talk about what makes a successful smartphone video. A few things you've already picked up intuitively from talking with a few of you. One, you want to keep your video short, under two minutes. People have a very short attention span, especially with video, and videos are getting faster and faster. I mean, there are one minute or 30 second film festivals that you can enter these days, which is crazy. So keep it under two minutes, that keeps it manageable for you, and you can focus on one specific topic per video. You're not going all over the place. Stay very specific. Um, you want a steady camera, clear audio, interesting subjects. Um, so obviously all of you are interesting. You have businesses and organizations doing some really cool stuff. And if you're going to be putting someone else on video, whether it's a friend or a coworker or a client or customer, make sure they have a big personality. The bigger the personality, the better. It's going to be interesting to watch. Um, you might have someone who's really valuable, but their personality is a little, a little dull. It's just entertainment. They want to have someone entertaining on screen. And if 
that you want to have valuable content. Let's talk about how short is short. Uh, so one minute is a fairly long time, and to demonstrate this, what we're all going to do is we're going to look straight ahead for one minute. We're not going to read, don't look at your watch, don't close your eyes, and I'll time one minute out for us. And we're just going to sit and experience the fullness of one minute, and just imagine the possibilities we can fit into it. All right, get the stopwatch. All right, everyone ready? Let's start one minute right now. much you want to, you know, have people stop what they're doing, whatever it is they're doing, and watch your content. Um, so a minute is a long time. You can fit a lot of information into that space. And you're asking someone to trade up one minute, whatever they're doing, to watch you. So you want to respect people's time. You can create something really interesting. Um, and that's why you want to pick one topic. If you're doing a video, pick about one hyper-specific thing. Okay, now we're going to get into some of the technical aspect and the actual um, skill. We need to shoot, shoot the video before we do another activity in a little bit. All right, step one. If you know you are going to shoot video that day, make sure your phone is charged. Perfect. So you want to make sure everyone's phone is charged. <laughs> uh, and you want to make sure you have enough space in your phone. About, one, about 10 gigabytes of space is enough to hold an hour of video on, on your smartphones. It varies depending on the quality. Um, if you have an older phone, the resolution might be lower, so you can fit more. If you have a brand new phone, or you're shooting slow motion or 4K, it's going to be much shorter. But on average, high definition video is going to be one hour for 10 gigabytes. So you don't need to have a big phone. If you're only shooting a one minute video, maybe you need like one, one gigabyte essentially, so like even less. And the other thing you want to do is you want to put your, plane, your phone in airplane mode for a few reasons. So does, anyone, does everyone know how to put their phone in airplane mode? So why don't you go ahead and do that now? I have a captive audience. Uh, <laughs> but the reason you want to do this are twofold. One is going to preserve the battery on your phone while you're shooting video. That can eat up. That can eat up a lot of battery, and you don't need to necessarily drain your battery with your cell phones and the internet while you're shooting video just for a minute. And also, you don't want to have any notifications coming in or calls coming through or alerts that can mess up the video. You can either get those get the sound, it can pause the recording, or it can just cause the phone to shake if it has a vibration. Putting on the airplane mode will make sure the phone is just a video camera. So it doesn't use any power during that time? Or? Uh, it does use power, but it'll use significantly less. Okay. Less. It's going to use at least half as much power okay. as it would have otherwise. All right, holding your camera s steady. I want to show you a few different grips to use for your phone. Um, open up your camera app. <coughs> Get into the video mode. And there's a few ways to hold it steady. This grip on the, on the screen is my favorite one. It's where you place your hand, hold it in a grip like this. Keep your elbows, bring your elbow close to your body, and, let, and kind of just let your hand hang down, using your wrist to, to keep it up. Close to your body, bring it close and comfortable. So for one, one thing, you can hold this for a long time, and it's not. Um, it's not uncomfortable. It's stable because you're not dealing with two hands trying to shake and stabilize it. Your body's just at rest. And if you don't move, you have a perfect, really static shot. You're turning yourself into a tripod. And if you want to show different things in the room, you can just twist your, twist your, uh, your waist. And do like iPhone yoga video class. <laughs> <laughs> and 
so this is this is a great this is a great grip, and it, and it allows you to have a free hand, which we'll go back into later. At the very least, you can tell somebody action without having to say it. You can get it ready and then give them a point, um, or tell them to wrap it up. Um, the other thing you can do, and this is great too if you want to rest on something that's easy to just take this and rest on a plain surface. Another grip is if you want if you do want to use two hands, just keep your elbows close to your body and hold the phone real tight. It's all about, it's all about creating that um, stability in, in your core, so it's, it's being held. But you don't, really, you don't really want to just hold it with one hand yes. like this. You're going to block everything. Oh, and the other reason like this, you can hit the record button mm -hmm. without having to shift around. Yeah. You have that free hand to hit record. All right, so <laughs> if you have a case, it can be a little harder. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to adapt. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had it down. Yeah, I mean, you might want to hold it with two hands. That's fine too. But if you have a relatively slim case, I like this. It's not bad. But if you, or if you have like the iPhone, like or like smartphone, like they're really big, you can't. You can't really do that either. Okay, lighting. Lighting is really important. The first thing, first of all, is that you want to be in a place that has nice, even lighting. You don't want to be in a dark hallway. Um, fluorescent lights never look good. There's not too much you can do about that. But on your phones, you can adjust the exposure. That means what you can choose what part of the frame is light and which part of the frame is dark. So on your phone, go into video mode. Is everyone in video mode? Mm -hmm. If you're on Android, it's a little different, um, but there are settings on the Android phone. On iPhone, if you tap and hold mm -hmm. the person's face that you want to look at, just tap and hold on it. Does everyone see a yellow square that showed up? Yeah. It says auto A E A F lock. Mm -hmm. And now if you Put your hand on your phone and swipe, just hold up and down. You should be able to control how dark or bright the screen is. And you always want to, you know, that you always want to expose for the person's face. That's the most important thing. Even if the background is too bright or too dark, the most important thing is somebody's face. So point it at somebody. Go ahead and point your phone at someone and just try to get some good exposure. Wow, I didn't know that. You touch their face. Yeah, um, you have an Android, so it might be a little different. Yeah. And to get out of it, just tap anywhere else, and it, and it takes it off and goes back into auto mode. Okay. And if you're doing interviews, try to keep it away. Try to keep the light source behind you. You don't want the person behind a window switch, so the window is behind your back, and the person's face is being oh, yeah. in the window. Okay, yeah. Just like you're taking a photograph. Yeah. Framing. You want to frame your video. So you have a nice professional looking shot. And today's viewers are really sophisticated. We're used to seeing everything look extremely cinematic, extremely composed, and you have to match that. And the, one of the easiest ways to do that is by framing your video. There's three major shots. There's a close up, a medium shot, and a wide shot. Pretty self-explanatory. A wide shot is you see a lot of, a lot of the room. A medium shot is about mid waist to a little bit above the head. And a close-up is shoulders and face. And uh, with the short videos, close-ups are pretty good because the small phones are intimate. You want to connect with the, with the person. Um, so the, if you're looking at me presenting, it's sort of like a wide shot. You see me, you kind of look at your, you get a sense of what's in the room. Uh, if you're talking, if you're looking at the person on the row behind you, that's more of a medium shot. And if you're talking to the person next to you, that feels like a close-up. And you want to create that sense of you're, you're that person's friend, you have a close relationship, so a close up will help, help subconsciously create that. Yeah. And audio. Audio is arguably more important than the video. You want to have nice, strong sounding audio because people will watch a video, people listen to radio, but people don't watch silent movies anymore. Mm -hmm. you know? And audio is really important. Podcasting is coming back. Audio is really, really important. And there's a few ways to get good audio. The first is you want to be in a quiet space. If you're, sh if you're shooting in here, like when we're filming with everybody, try to find a corner, try to go out into a hallway. Step one, get away from the noise if you can. The second step is to bring your camera closer to the subject. The closer the person is to your phone, the closer they are to the microphone on your phone. And the microphone is right in between the flash and the lens in, on the back of your phone. and that helps get really good sound. If you're in a space and you really can't get closer to somebody, you could even 
take a credit card. This helps a little bit. <coughs> Even taking a credit card like this, it kind of it will bounce the sound and kind of keep it coming in. It will kind of capture some of the some of the waves. Wow. Um, if you don't have a microphone, but that's another a tip you could use. My favorite way is to use the headphones that come with your phone. Does anyone have their headphones with them? Yeah. Nobody? Anybody? Yes. So if you can dig, try to find it, like dig out your phone, your your uh, headphones that came with your iPhone. Or you can go to Walgreens and get them for like 16 bucks or something. Just get a pair of headphones they have. I know I'll call all that. But the important part is that little speaker that you see people use and talking to on their phones with the hands-free mode, because this is a great microphone. And what you're going to use, you're going to use this as, um, as a microphone to record the audio. Almost like a handheld microphone, like if you're, if you're interviewing people, and you just keep it right below frame. So I'll show you some examples, and you can take a look at what these three different things do. Everyone ready? Here we go. Right now you're shooting a video without a proper microphone, and as you can see, I'm six feet away from my camera on an iPhone, and as you can tell, the sound is kind of blending in with the ambient light noise. <laughs> that was James. <laughs> but you can, you can hear she's, she's down that she blended in. You can still hear her, um, but we're going to try to get some better sound. So then I asked, um, then I asked Kayla to get closer to my camera. Let's get a close-up shot so she would be closer to the microphone. Right now I'm standing three feet away from my iPhone, which is capturing audio and video for me. And as you can tell, when you move your iPhone closer to the subject, the audio does improve, but still at three feet, my audio and my voice is blending in with the ambient room noise. So we're better, so we're getting closer. And then on the third time, we use the microphone. So check this out. Right now I'm still standing three feet away from my iPhone that's recording. And here I'm using a microphone that is built into my earbud, and it's below the frame, but it's still catching my voice properly, <laughs> and it's separating my voice from the ambient room noise surrounding me. Yeah, so you hear the difference. So, let's, yeah. so you heard that. Let's just, let's just go back again. This is without the microphone. Right now I'm standing three feet away from my iPhone, which is sharp. capturing audio and video for me. And then back before when she was further away. Right now you're shooting a video without a proper microphone, and as you can see, I'm six. And so we really want to use that built-in microphone. Right now I'm to get that clear sound. My iPhone, really, it sounds really professional. It's what we're used to hearing on the radio, on our phones, um, when you're listening to other interviews. So it's definitely worth the investment to find your headphones that you got with it or get a new one. Yeah, did you have a question? I do have a question. What about your, um, if you have a Bluetooth earpiece, could you use that? No, because No, it won't connected. because that's only going to be sending sound to it. It won't be picking up. Um, oh, you had a yeah, like, oh, like, like, like a... Yeah, like an ear, when I'm in the car, I have a hands-free. So what if I use that as a microphone? Do you know if that, you could expect I don't know. You have, to, you, have, you have to test it to see yeah. if it works with your um, video app, but just put it on and do, do a test. Hmm. Um, I know the hard lines are like programmed well, yeah. to do that. Yeah. So is she actually mm -hmm. holding it like a microphone? No, so I had it in frame at the beginning. So if you're filming, you're the, you're the one who wants, you want to be the one. Okay, oh, I would be holding it, okay. Yeah, so I'll sh yeah. I, let me show you. And then you just turn the volume all the way up? Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it really doesn't have anything to do with the volume, it's just gonna oh. capture automatically. Okay. The sound. So what you would do, so this is another reason why you want to have a hands free. I should have recorded all these. Right. You have one hand free and then you put it up to their mouth. Okay. Yeah. We're going to demonstrate. <laughs> and so you hold it up to their mouth. Wah, 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 and then just bring it down. <laughs> Look at your camera and just bring it down until it's right out of the frame. Okay. So you set it oh, wow. and then bring it down. Oh. But that'll show you how close, then in that case you have to be close. Yeah, then you have to do a close up. And it all, it all fits in together. Oh. Okay, so this is, we're going to get into some use cases for why you want to do these interviews. Um, mainly for testimonials. You have clients, you have um, customers, and you really want to share with the world how great your services and products are. And it's great to have people just on your website or on social media saying, this is really, really great. I want to get my, you know, my headshots done here. Um, or I want to find out more about my personality. What you want to do, you want to do two things. The first thing you want to do is have them 
spell their name on a separate clip or write it down somewhere where you won't lose it. So on the website or on social media when you're sharing your name, you have the correct spelling. Nothing's worse than having a great interview and then spelling someone's name wrong. They feel completely disrespected. So you don't want to do that. And then in the clip, you want, them, you want to ask them to say their full name and title. So you're all doing everything in one take. And then when you, ask, when you ask them the question, you want them to make their answer part, their question part of the answer. So if you ask them, uh, what's your favorite service at ACMI? You'd want them to say, my name is Jonathan Barbado. Uh, I'm a client at ACMI. And my favorite workshop, uh, my favorite service is the workshops because I'm having, going to explain. This way you have everything in one take. You don't need to have your voice in it. You don't need to put text on the screen. It's just one take, one minute, and you can put it online right away. And stay eye level. Let's take a look at an example, and then I'll have you film your own. At ACMI, I was able to go to a local business in the town, and I was able to create my own program in this piece to kind of show and raise awareness of a business that hasn't really caught much attention. And for me, it was really important because I love helping people out, and if there's a great business that you want to support, I think they deserve to get more support from the community. And I was really glad that through this medium and the storytelling method, I was able to do that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you don't need to redo that take. <laughs> um, and so that's it. You have that in one take. You can put it online. And you don't need to edit with any graphics. A great idea is if you can get your company logo, like you have ACMI, somewhere right over their shoulder so it's, so it's in their background. Don't put them up against the wall. You notice there's a little bit of depth going, yeah. going on there. But if you can find like, um, like a poster, or a flyer, anything you already have made, just set it up a little bit in the background, and so that branding is always there as it's giving the testimonial. You don't have to deal with any editing. I'll tell you have a few more tricks up your sleeve and some skills, some more video skills. I want you to give testimonials to each other. Um, find a partner, and it can be about this workshop <laughs> if you just need to find something, or it can be if either of you are familiar with each other's business, you could give one for, for that. Um, or you could you know, network, see where each other's businesses are and just kind of give a testimony or else if you loved it. All right, we're gonna, yeah? I've got a good question. So, uh, I, so where do you want them to be looking? So if you're holding the, are they looking at the phone? Or they no, they're gonna, they're, gonna look right, they're gonna look right at the phone. Okay. So there's two, different, there's two different theories about this. If you're having a conversation and doing an interview type show, you want them looking at you and not the camera. Um, but when they're looking at the camera, they're creating a relationship between that single viewer and the person in the camera. So traditional film technique is you don't have the person looking at the camera, but with the advent of online social media and connecting and that full personal branding aspect of it, you want it to feel like a conversation. Like we're connecting, you're not observing, you're actually participating in the conversation. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so go ahead, we're gonna take another maybe three minutes and try to create a 30 second testimonial with someone next to you. Go ahead. So use, use the right <laughs> hand grip. Find some place quiet if you can. Uh, try to get that right exposure with the lighting. And then come back. Now, welcome back, everybody. How did your, uh, how did your second shoot go? Did you, you feel like you, were, you conquered any of the, the challenges from earlier? Or um, were there any other challenges that you ran into this time? Do you feel like you want to make sure we address? No? All right. But you have, you, have, you have a lot of great skills now that you can use to create videos. And there are a lot of different types of videos. I want to briefly go over um, some of the different types as we head towards the end here. Um, so testimonials are a great, a great uh, use of videos. Another great use is doing how-to videos, short snippets so you can share information, create goodwill with your potential customers, your potential clients. Um, all of you are experts in a certain area. And you can use that expertise to show people how to do things. For example, like ACMI, we're here showing you how to use your iPhone. You could um, each help every little different skill. And like we said before, you want to keep it short and simple. And I'll show you an example that we did to put online for social media. Teach people how to do a short edit. And it helps people want to come back and maybe learn more from you. Stay tuned for other videos. So keep coming back. And most importantly, if you're showing how to use a skill or a technique, um, you'll be identified as an expert, and people will share it with their friends if they learn something from it. Hi everyone, my name is Steph, and 
from an intern at HDMI, and today I'm going to show you how to make a cut on Premiere. So if you look at the timeline real quick, there are three steps to doing this. So first you're going to find out where you want to cut. Let's say right about here. And then you're going to get the razor tool. And to do a shortcut on that, you would just hit C. And then you bring it up and you see your razor tool. And the third step would be just to cut your media right there. And that's all you really have to do. So if you want to learn more, you should visit us at acmi.tv. You can maybe take a workshop or become a member. We'll see you here. Great, just a short little scale. And the important thing is at the end, um, send people somewhere. You don't want to let them go, let the video float away without having a place to send people. So your name of your organization, to send them to a website or a Facebook page or a Twitter handle, whatever it is that you're actually going to be on and be able to respond to people, make sure you send them there. Um, we don't have time to do it, but that's, and then I want to show you one other example um, is doing a product demo. So if you create something, and this, this can be the same thing for a service demo, you can kind of show them what your service is like, and you just give them one small sample. Um, and it's better than text, you don't have to explain what it is that you do, you can show them, and there's a much shorter time than it would take to have a whole web page explaining what all of these services, is, what does it mean, where does it come from, you can just show them, they'll be able to evaluate for themselves, and you can show them by a step, a step process. One thing we did at ACMI a couple of years ago, this is a little bit on the older side, we had, um, we got some new equipment, so we did an unboxing video to drum up excitement for some new, some something new that we had. I'm going to show you this. And this one was a little bit edited, but it was still done on the Hi, I'm Jess Barnhouse from Arlington Community Media, and today we are unboxing the new uh, Broadcast Picks Rody system. And a little ponytail here, keyboard, OSHA cable, can't have too many of those. Do you want that? Pick Inputs, it's got four of them, chart on the back. Cool, and it's got a leather handle. And we can see it in that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just a fun video, you get a sense of, you get to know the staff, see how excited they are about some new equipment that comes in, um, and it's just something to share. The important thing is you always want to be creating content uh, consistently. So you might be sick of doing how-to videos, you might not have anyone do a testimonial, but if you get a new box in of a, like a new order or something, open it up, show them how excited you are, and then they'll kind of feel like they're, they have a buy-in, they're, they're part of the business. That looks like, yeah, did you do some editing on yeah, this one? It moves along at a different pace. Yeah, this one had some editing in it. It wasn't a, uh, a simple take. But it was edited on the iPhone, and you come back to ACMI, come visit us at 85 Park Ave, or check out our website, acmi.tv, we can set up some more training and show you how to use your iPhone to do some simple editing, or you know, you can kind of take a big one and do a TV show. I, I did a, a, last year I did a five minute thing on my book, and it took me, it took me almost a year. It did take you a while. So, but I, I learned so much about cutting and editing. It's really fascinating. I feel like I understand a little bit more how TV and movies work, and they're yeah. very helpful. Jonathan, too. Yeah. It, take, it, take, it takes a little while, but once you get used to it, it definitely, um, definitely helps. All right, last couple of things. You want to share your videos. The largest platform is online right now to show you to share your videos are um, in, in order are YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Those are the most popular video sites. Um, on YouTube, how-to videos are increasing 70% um, 70, 70 year after year since 2015, wow. I believe. So every every single year, there's been, there's been more 70% uh, more people each year going to figure out how to do things, how to learn a scale, how to check out um, product demo. So that's something you definitely want to get in on if you're not doing that already. Instagram is owned by Facebook, um, but it's more targeted to influencers. So if you want to create like a personality who has a certain lifestyle, that's really what, what that's used for. And then Facebook, of course, everyone is sharing. That's where families and, and uh, just networks of people are in. When you upload, and we'll, we can talk about it just at a different session, but when you upload to YouTube, you can embed your content other places, but the best thing really would be to upload your video into each individual service. So if you have an account, you make your video, upload it on YouTube, upload it on Instagram, upload it on Facebook separately. So it shows up natively. So when you open those apps, it will play automatically and not send you someplace else. 
There are also accessories to make this a little easier. Um, you can get a tripod, it's called a gorilla pod. It's pretty flexible, you can put it um, on anything to help stabilize your shot. They have dedicated lavalier microphones that you can get to speak into it for your phone. There's um, shotgun microphones that you can buy to get sound in the room. And different lenses to bring the image closer or further away from you. And these are fun and they're great for all the tips that we went through. You don't need to buy any of this. You really kind of know how to do it yourself with your own body um, and creativity and the tools you already have. But if you like gadgets yeah, like I do, <laughs> you can go ahead and go crazy and, and, and buy everything all the time. What was the name of the little microphone you said? It's called a lavalier microphone. Lavalier. So if you, if you go on Amazon and search for lavalier microphone or even lav, L-A-V, for iPhone, make sure it's for iPhone. Um, your iPhone has a little extra ring inside of it, so you want to make sure you get that three-ring lavalier. If you search for iPhone, the right thing will come up. And there you have oh, yeah. See, you have one right there. Yeah. Oh. oh. Cool. Yeah, they're really... Are they reasonably priced? It's like 20 bucks. Yeah, all, all these accessories are very, like, about $20 or less. Um, the shotgun microphone might be a little bit more expensive, like 30 but you can get lenses. Don't spend more than... Like if you're paying $10, that's like the upper range for the lenses. Um, the Gorilla Pod is probably about $20, $25. That's worth it. If you were going to get one thing, yeah. I would get this. I would get the, get a Gorilla Pod. A great company that makes them is called Joby, J-O-B-Y. And they're the original. They're the ones who, who first made them. Yeah. Is there a way, if you're doing a video on a tripod of yourself and you don't have a partner available to help you, that you can use an app that might be like a remote to start and stop the video? Um, kind of having your, your I think, so your microphone that you have, that will, that will hit, if you hit, if you hit the center button, it will record video. Really? Yeah, so what you can do, let's borrow, oh, this is my, that's yours. <laughs> I didn't recognize it all on Tango. <laughs> So if the center button will start the recording. Oh, so if you plug it in for yourself, plug it into your phone, hold it up, look at, look at your frame, make sure. You can even shoot with the inside camera if you want. Um, bring it out of frame and then just hit the middle button and it will start recording. Oh, that, will that will trigger, start, that will stop and trigger oh, yeah. the, um, the recording. That's a good question. Thanks for asking. What was the name of the company for the world? Uh, Joby, J-O-B-Y. They sell them on Amazon too, but um, Joby has like good quality and they have a good like return policy and all of that. Yeah? So the little lights that you can put on like for selfies, does that work for video as well? That will work for video as well. So if you, um, a lot of those plug into, what are those plug, they plug into the headphone jack as well? Yes. Some of them? Yep. But then you wouldn't be able to use the microphone. You just have to pick your trade off. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. I mean, it work. Yeah, I mean, the, the best thing is if you can find a window someplace right. and not even have it directly behind you, but if you have it like three quarters behind you and just kind of just casting light onto your subject, that's the best way to do it. Um, are there any other questions? Be able to answer anything even after, or um, you can email me. If you, want, if you have any more questions or you want to do some more training, yeah. This might be a longer bit. To download onto to get a video onto YouTube is that really difficult or is that no? You just download the YouTube app and it'll be a big upload button and send it. Okay. Okay. Did I have a question about the new iPhone? Yeah. It. Um, we were. I don't have it, but someone else had it. We recorded it, and the new iPhone records in a like iPhone native format, H C E C yeah, or something, something like that. And then I usually just plug in the phone the computer and grab the video. Mm -hmm. But that video is not editable by any programs on like Windows. Uh, so do you have recommendations for what yeah, to I mean, do? Yeah, I mean, if you have access to um, obviously Adobe Premiere, if you're editing in Adobe Premiere, there's a program called Encoder. And that can convert your video. You can, up, you can send it in. It will change it to MP4 format, but you can actually edit. Um, but I know there's a setting now on that phone to record either in the native or MP4. So, like, we've switched at some point. Do you recommend just switching? Is I would just switch it, yeah. If anything okay. that can get your video off, it's, it's better. Okay. Um, but it will take up more space in your phone. So if, if, it's a, if it's in the iPhone format, it'll take up less room because it's compressed. If it's not, it's going to take up more room. But I would just, whatever you can do to make it more flexible right. is the best. And Apple will try to fight you every, on every angle on that on that side. 
And um, I'd love to come back some other time and do a whole session on uploading video and, and sharing that yeah. online. Is your vertical video uh, skit on your website? Yeah, that actually that's not produced by, by me, but it's on. Um, we're going to post this whole presentation with the links to the video. I'm going to put it up on the, the chamber site, so you'll be able to have access to to all of that as well. And it's it's funny. It, it goes on and on, but uh, the first the first minute and a half is, is my favorite. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, and if this, this seems like something you want to do um, more long term, at ACMI, we can help you create your own weekly TV show. Um, if you wanted to bring in other experts from your field and have an interview show, just kind of be the person that is networking to other people in your field and you want to give them something, essentially giving them a, a platform to, to promote themselves and their product or their services, you can do that uh, at ACMI. It has to be non-commercial, but if you focus on their skills, you can definitely do that. Or um, create even more in-depth how-to shows with different camera angles and different edits. Like Len does a great show with, um, with Wanamaker, a good how-to show. Um, if you want to watch some more examples, visit our website, acmi.tv. And if you have any questions, uh, or you just want to talk more, or have different ideas, and you want to get some advice, or you feel like you forgot something, you, you want to do anything else, definitely reach out to me. It's jonathan at acmi.tv, and I'd be happy to help out and, and help you make better videos. Thank you for having me today. Thank you.